Away from Home by Arletta Richardson Chapter 7. A Thump on the Head November 17, 1889 Winter is here at last. We have had several big snowfalls and it looks like more today. As usual, I'm nervous about them, but I'm trying to do as Ma advised. Study as hard as I can and trust the Lord to bring things to mind. I don't think I feel very well this morning, I said. I'm not surprised, Sarah Jane replied. You tossed and moaned all night long. Did you eat something that didn't agree with you? No, I dreamed something that didn't agree with me. I failed all my exams. There's no way you could fail an exam, Mabel. You don't know how. It didn't seem too hard in my dream. I just didn't write anything. Dreams do not happen when you're awake, Sarah Jane assured me. By Wednesday, you will have forgotten it and be writing more than anyone in the class. I knew it was foolish to be bothered by a dream, but it kept coming back to me all day. It didn't help when Warren joined us at noon. I suppose you're all ready for the big week, he said cheerfully. You've kept up with me pretty well on the daily lessons. Do you think you can do as well on the exams? Oh, Warren, go plague someone else, will you please? I said crossly. You know there isn't one-tenth of a percentage point between us. Why wouldn't I do well? I can always hope, can't I? You could be hit in the head and lose your memory, or... If you don't get out of here, I'm likely to hit you in the head, I told him. Don't waste your time wishing misfortune on me. If you can't stand the thought of a girl being as smart as you are, that's your problem. The examination schedule was posted on the bulletin board. I had two days to go over my notes and listen to the review in classes. There was no reason why I should have any difficulty, but I felt uneasy. That schedule isn't going to disappear because you're glaring at it. Russ stood behind me, and I hadn't even heard him approach. You look as though you could use some fresh air. How about going tobogganing with us this evening? Thanks, Russ. I shook my head. I'd better not. I should stay in and study. Still competing with Warren, huh? Well, if you change your mind, be ready when we come to pick up Sarah Jane. He walked away and I turned to start home. Sarah Jane was staying to complete a science project and I'd have a couple of hours before supper to work. What makes him think that keeping ahead of Warren is all I care about? I thought irritably. I was concerned about my own record after all. I started reviewing my Latin. That needed the least time, I thought, and getting the easy ones out of the way first would leave time for history and math. I was so immersed in my book that the sound of Letty's voice startled me. Mabel, it's too dark in here to see. Why haven't you lighted the lamp? I didn't even notice, I replied. Is it getting that late? Where's Sarah Jane? She's coming up the road. Suppose you put that aside now. Supper's almost ready. I guess I will, Letty. My back is getting stiff from sitting so still. I got up and stretched the kinks out and then went downstairs to meet Sarah Jane. She came in covered with snow. It's beautiful out there, she exclaimed. It's going to be great for sledding tonight. I looked out the door. When did that start? What do you mean, when did it start? Where have you been all afternoon? Studying, I replied. I didn't have time to look out the window. I took her books while she removed her coat and boots. You're going tobogganing tonight? Of course. Who could stay in on a night like this just to study? I could, I told her. You would too if you had had the dream I had. Are you still worried about that? Sarah Jane looked at me in disbelief. You know dreams have nothing to do with what really happens. Besides, you need some time to let your brain rest. Come on, even Warren is going tonight. Sarah's right, Mabel. You need to get out for a while, Letty agreed. Come and eat supper and then put on your warm things and go with the other young people. A couple of hours will refresh your mind so you can think better when you come back. By the time the others had arrived, I was convinced that I shouldn't miss the party. Aren't you glad you came? Russ asked during one of our plotting trips back up the hill. I nodded happily. It really was a beautiful night to be out. At the top of the ridge, four of us climbed on the toboggan for another ride to the bottom. Later, I remembered that we were going down a different slide and someone called, Look out! The next thing I knew, I was waking up in Dr. Matson's office. 
Molly, Sarah Jane, Russ, and Warren stood around me with anxious faces. Oh, you frightened us, Mabel, Molly said. You looked so pale. I thought you were dead. I knew she wasn't dead. She'd never miss her exams, Sarah Jane said. I'm sorry I said anything about hitting your head, Warren put in. Can you still think? And I shouldn't have made that remark about you competing with Warren either, Russ added. I just wanted you to come with us. I don't suppose anyone wants to tell me what happened, do you? I asked. How did I get here? Your toboggan hit a rock and all of you were thrown off, Dr. Matson said. Unfortunately, you landed on your head against a tree. If it hadn't been for your heavy hat and the scarf tied over it, you'd probably have cracked your skull open. The boys pulled you over here on the sled. You'd better not try walking for a while. How long a while? I asked anxiously. I have to go to school tomorrow. Dr. Matson shook his head. No school for you this week, young lady. At least five days in bed. Letty will see that you are taken care of. But I have to take my exams, I wailed. They'll be there when you get back, Dr. Matson assured me. Your teachers will let you make them up. I don't want you looking at any books this week. Take this medicine and we'll get you home to bed. My head ached so badly that I knew it was no use to protest. Perhaps if I lay perfectly still, I would be well sooner than the doctor expected. I slept most of the next day. Letty came in to check on me and reported that the world was going around very nicely without me. Sarah Jane offered to read my history notes to me in the afternoon, and Molly came by to say that our classmates sent their sympathy. On Wednesday morning, I made a tentative effort to get up alone. I could see at once that I would not be going anywhere. Why did the Lord let something happen to me right now? I asked Letty when she came in. He knows this is exam week. I'm not sure I can answer that, child, Letty replied. Maybe he wants you to know that there are things in your life just as important as being at the head of your class. But surely God wants us to do the very best we can. You've done that, haven't you? Yes, I answered. I've tried to. I can't see how that could be wrong. Maybe you've been trying for the wrong reasons, Letty suggested. She let me think that over. What wrong reason was there for wanting to be a good student, or even the best student? Sarah Jane came home in the afternoon with a report on the first two tests. You won't have any trouble with English or biology, Mabel. They both covered exactly what we had in class. Warren is just going to have to wait an extra week until you get your exams before he finds out who's at the top. Everyone knows it will be one or the other of you. Suddenly, I knew what Letty meant. Just learning all I could wasn't enough for me. I had to be better than someone else. My pride would be hurt if Warren earned a few points more than I did, even if I had done my best. A thump on the head is a pretty hard way to learn that, Sarah Jane said when I shared the insight with her. Does that mean you won't be competing with Warren any longer? Doesn't mean that I won't try to be first if I can, I told her. I just won't think the sky has fallen on me if he does better. At least, I hope that's how I'll feel. I really don't like to be second. On Monday, I returned to school and was told that I might make up my exams one each day after my classes. Are you sure you didn't arrange that accident so you could know what was on the test before you took them? Clarice asked. I was just kidding, she added with a laugh. You probably didn't need that extra week to study. I'd almost forgotten what a pain she is, I sputtered to Molly. If I was going to arrange an accident, I'd have it happen to her. So that's what it means to love your neighbor as yourself, Molly laughed. You'd share whatever you have with her, even a broken head? No, that's not love, I admitted. That's spite. I'm going to have to pray that the Lord will help me be forgiving toward her, or I'll end up acting just like she does. I wish I knew why she dislikes me so. Why not ask her? Molly suggested. My theory is that she wants to be the most popular girl in school. You're in her way. The similarity between Clarice and me was plainer than I wanted to look at just then. I pushed the thought away and concentrated on studying. When the grades were posted, Warren and I shared first place in everything but math. Again, he was ahead by two points. 
I really think I've learned something this term, I confided to Sarah Jane. Trying to keep ahead of someone else takes all the fun out of what you're doing. I've known that for a long time, Sarah Jane told me. Ever since first grade, I've never been able to get ahead of you, so I just settled for having fun. We mediocre people have so much less trouble going through life, Mabel. You really ought to try it. I made a face at her and settled down to read a new book. The second term had begun on Monday, and I determined to put my newfound knowledge to work. I would begin having fun. End of chapter 7